Hi, I'm John Vessels, and welcome to our Seasons Reading Storytelling Time brought to you by the Phoenix Theater and the Indianapolis Public Library. I love to read books, and I especially love reading Dr. Seuss books. One of my all-time favorite books, especially this time of year, is the story about a little town called Whoville and a nasty green creature, the Grinch. Together, they learn that Christmas doesn't come from a store. It means a little bit more. The book is titled, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it's written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. Let's take a look inside. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas. The whole Christmas season, now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But, whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm-lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop the whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick! With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max. And he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! 
and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care when he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claws hissed as he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. And he got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he's grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room. And he took every present, pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums, and he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the who pudding, he took the roast beast, he cleaned out the ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove But when he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove, he turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there. Then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons and wrappings, the tags and the tinsels, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo, poo to the who's, he was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. <laughs> They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. The mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry. Boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. 
He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. <gasps> Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Yum. <laughs> I could go for some roast beef and who hash right now. How about you? I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I did. I know we all look forward to the time when we can get together again with our families like we did. But before we go, I'd like to thank all of our Seasons Reading sponsors, plus our friends at the Indianapolis Public Library for making these stories possible. And I'd especially like to thank you for joining us for Seasons Readings. We hope you come back next week for a very special reading of the All I'll Ever Want Christmas Doll read by the wonderful Millicent Wright. And parents, Please remember, Phoenix Theater programming like this is made possible with the support of people just like you. Please support them at phoenixtheater.org. This is John Vessel saying goodbye and happy holidays.